If you are interested in actually rolling up your sleeves and changing your life, taking the action oriented steps that it takes to make your dream life a reality, I'm sharing with you a clear concrete system that gives you the actual steps to take to make that happen. I'm such a goal setting nerd. I've been setting goals every year. This year I learned about a specific goal setting method that really changed the game for me. And it really helped me transform my goals into concrete actionable steps that made them happen faster than I could have ever imagined. So I'm excited to share that method with you today. Now, this is not meant to be hype. This is an action-oriented, tangible system. This goal-setting system is for someone who believes that they have to put in the hard work to make their goals happen, but that it is possible to make your dream life a reality, and you're willing to roll up your sleeves and do the hard work. And just for one quick, concrete anecdote example, I followed this plan and it took my YouTube channel from 100 subscribers to over 2,000 and counting in only 12 weeks. It was a goal of mine to grow my channel to 1,000 YouTube subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in order to get monetized. That means to get ads placed on my videos in order to make passive income from making videos. And not only did I hit that goal, but I doubled it and counting. Okay, are you excited yet? I really hope you are because I love goal setting. The idea that you can take control of your life and make things happen, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of where you are now, you can make steps to get to where you wanna go in life. So if you are ready to do that, let's start. So as a bit of background information, The 12 Week Year is a book written by Brian Moran and Michael Lennington. I read this book in May of this year. As I mentioned, it really shifted how I approach making my goals happen. So the book is built off this idea that's backed by research that most goals, or at least in a business context, most goals are completed in the last quarter of the fiscal year. And that's because with a time crunch, with a bit of a squeeze and a hard deadline in sight, people stop frittering around, they pick up the phones, they put in the work and they get things done. Everyone makes a concerted effort when winning or losing is on the line. So it takes that concept, that time constraint concept, and it applies it to your personal life and your personal goals. This isn't meant to create a false sense of urgency. If you think about it, when you set goals for a year, a year timeline feels very far out. And so it's very easy for those goals to sort of fall by the wayside for us to become lax or to think, okay, I'll do that next month. I'll start that next quarter. But when we put ourselves on a tighter timeline and one year becomes three months, and a month becomes a quarter, and a week becomes a month, if you see what I'm saying, we just sort of distill that time down, it becomes so much easier for us to take the action steps that need to happen and to leave aside all of the low value work that's actually just wheel spinning in disguise. So it takes the same concept and it applies this time constraint to your own personal goals. If you already set goals in your life, you probably have heard of setting SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and on a timeline. Think of SMART goals as the how you choose your goals and the 12 week year as how you make those goals happen. SMART is the what and the 12 weeks is the how. So the thing is when we set goals for a year, the timeline is so far out that it's really easy just to naturally, human nature, become sort of lax about those goals. So this method shakes that up and it distills your goals down into 90 day sprints. It also gives you the added benefit of focusing on just one or two goals in that 12 week period instead of trying to accomplish all of your goals all at once. So right now it's the end of December, it's almost January 1st. Imagine what you could accomplish by spring break with this 12 week year goal method. I'm gonna share with you my top five takeaways because I read this book and I took actual notes. I never do that when I read books, but I literally opened my laptop and took pages and pages of notes because it's that good. But if it's you know the TLDR version, if you're not gonna actually pick up the book and read it, I just wanna give you my top five takeaways. Number one, your three year vision can be distilled down into a few critical core activities that drive success and fulfillment. It's the daily execution of these activities that guarantees achievement. Number two, execution is the single greatest differentiator. The barrier standing between you and the life that you are capable of living is a lack of consistent execution. Mm, that's a good one. Number three, 
People and organizations don't lack ideas. There are plenty of great ideas floating around. They lack execution. Number four, your three-year vision can be accomplished in a single weekly three-hour block of time. Yes, hear me out. This three-hour block of time in which you execute your top goal. This is called your strategic block, and it's strictly for executing your high-value tactics. You're gonna literally block it on your calendar. No distraction is welcome. No texts, no emails, no phone calls. It's only three hours a week, to accomplish your three-year life vision. And number five, my fifth top takeaway is that the most important actions are the uncomfortable ones. For example, I wanted to build and grow a YouTube channel and it is very uncomfortable to turn on a camera and sit down in front of it and start talking and just hope that someone shows up on the other end. But the reality is that when you put in the effort, the results do happen. Okay, so there is a lot of this book and it's super helpful to read it. So if you wanna get a copy of it, I'll leave an Amazon link below or you can grab a copy from your local library like I did. Although I'm sort of wishing that I bought this book because I wanna to refer to it again and again. And like I said, I took a ton of notes, but I need to reread it. Okay, so first I wanna give you just a high level overview of the 12 week year method, and then we'll dive into each of these more deeply. So first is all about creating an emotionally compelling vision for yourself. The second is about choosing your 12 week goal. Then you have to define your tactics. Number four is all about process control. And number five is your scorecard. So before we jump into our deep dive, there are three core character traits that are necessary to make your dream life a reality. The first thing is accountability. You have to take ownership of your own actions. The second thing is commitment. You have to keep the promises that you make to yourself. It's so easy to keep the promises we make to others and to put ourselves last, but no one else is gonna make your dream life a reality. So you have to commit to yourself and hold yourself accountable. And number three is about greatness in the moment showing up and doing that hard, uncomfortable action. And you'll be surprised that uncomfortable action, whether it's a phone call or an email or whatever, recording a video, it's five minutes, 20 minutes, an hour at most out of your week. It really doesn't take that much time to do those core critical actions that really make a difference. So show up in the moment, greatness in the moment. Okay, so now let's dive in. You can grab the download from my description box below if you wanna follow along in a fillable PDF, or you can just grab a blank piece of paper and take your own notes, but we're gonna dive into the system here. So the first part is all about creating an emotionally compelling long-term vision. And this doesn't have to be anything super involved, but you need to sit down and think where you wanna go and where you wanna be maybe five years or 10 years from now. We'll calculate this backwards, but cast a vision for yourself and for your life. Where do you wanna live? Who do you wanna be surrounded by? What do you want your day-to-day -day life to look like? What kind of house do you wanna live in? A car do you wanna drive? Because that will indicate the type of income you need to make, which will indicate the type of work you do. Think about all you wanna do, have, and be in your life. And think in terms of physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally, financially. Where do you live? I mean, maybe you're actually writing down a specific city or country that you're not even in currently. Nothing is off the table here. If you wanna make your life happen, it's up to you. Okay, so as you write down this five, 10 year vision, write it out, paint a picture, be hyper specific. You don't have to share this with anyone else, but make it so visual that you can imagine yourself there because that's the kind of thing that's gonna inspire you and make you take action on those days where you are just not feeling it. After you have that emotionally compelling long-term vision, you're gonna look at your three-year vision. So three years is a much more realistic timeline. You can kind of reach out three years into the future and see how old you'll be, where you'll probably be living, what kind of work you'll be doing, and who you will be surrounded by. So I wanna read you a little quote from the book that I jotted down when I was reading it, just to give you a bit of inspiration. Becoming your optimal self, the best, most confident you, the you who shows up with your best stuff, making things happen, making a difference, living a life of significance. What does it take to be your best, to be great? Now, moving on to your actual 12-week goals. Now, obviously, you can't take that three-year vision and just create it in 12 weeks. So you have your three-year vision, 
And now you need to think about the shorter term. Your 12 week goals are the bridge between your three year vision and the 12 week plan. You've got your vision, your goals, and then the actual step-by-step -step plan. Choose your goal for the next 12 weeks. Now you can choose one goal or two goals, but don't choose more than three goals because you want to focus, laser focus your attention and efforts, and you don't wanna create such a difficult process for yourself that it becomes overwhelming. It's better to accomplish one thing at a time and make consistent action than it is to try to do everything all at once and then not really get anywhere at all. So when you choose your 12 week goal or your 12 week goals, two would be ambitious. One is a good safe way to start. Make it specific and measurable. Okay, so I'll just offer up my example. So your first 12 week goal, my first 12 week goal was to get my YouTube channel monetized. But to transform that into a smart goal, I didn't just say get monetized on YouTube. My goal word by word was to grow my YouTube channel to 1000 subscribers by the end of the year, by December 31st. So you can see it was specific, measurable, and on a timeline. Another thing to think about is make sure that this goal, yes, it aligns with your three year vision, but that it also represents success in and of itself, because that will give you that small win. That will give you the momentum you need to keep moving forward. All right, so that was the visionary goal setting stuff. Now we get to get into the fun, action-oriented, planning, clear steps part. I love this part. For your goal, or for each goal that you have identified, define a list of tactics or core action items you need to take every single week and assign a deadline to each of those action items. And this can include one-time actions and also repeat actions, like something that recurs every week. So for example, my next goal with my YouTube channel is to grow my channel to 10,000 subscribers. And I'd love to do that in the next 12 weeks. So my list of actions for that goal looks like developing a list of keywords in my target niche to generate strong ideas due January 1st. So that's a one-time action that I will sit down, bang out that work and check it off the list. The next one, develop a content plan for the next 12 weeks due January 2nd. Record a video due every Tuesday. Edit a video due every Thursday. Create a thumbnail, description, text, and upload to queue it to YouTube every Friday. So you can see how these are recurring actions and one-time actions also. Your tactics, your action items. These need to start with a verb and be a complete sentence. Now, when you're creating your tactics, you need to think about choosing between high value and low value activities. What are those specific activities that will actually move the needle for you? Is it getting in your car and driving to the gym? Is it picking up the phone and making a cold call? Is it sending that uncomfortable email? Is it pressing record on your camera? That is the action that will actually deliver the results. It's not thinking about going to the gym, planning what you're gonna wear, planning what the video might be about, thinking about how many phone calls you should make in a day. No, the action is actually the verb, picking up the phone, going to the gym, doing the recording. That's where the secret sauce is. You have to think about high value activities and low value activities because it's the high value activities that actually move the needle. For example, with my YouTube example that I've been sharing with you, it's sitting down and pressing record and actually filming a video. The high value stuff isn't in reviewing analytics necessarily. That is valuable, but that is not actually going to get more videos published. So focus on the few vital actions that will actually drive your results. And when you're thinking about your tactics, it's important to think about where you're going to struggle. We all have struggles because the reality is, it's these core tactic actions that make us uncomfortable. That's why we haven't done them already. The picking up the phone and making the cold call is uncomfortable. Sending the email is uncomfortable. Pressing record is uncomfortable, but that's how the results happen. So think about where you're going to struggle. Identify that for yourself. Make sure that you're willing to work through that and make the sacrifice it takes to make that happen or be uncomfortable for that small amount of time that you're willing to demonstrate greatness in the moment. You are willing to show up for yourself to make your dream life a reality and then you can move forward. Okay, so you have your three-year vision, you have your 12-week goals identified, and now you have each of those goals distilled into specific concrete activities that if all of those are completed, you will most likely hit that goal. The next thing is all about process control, controlling the controllables. Process control is vital and it's all about the when. When are you going to take these actions to make your goals happen? Here's how you're gonna make it happen. 
You're gonna do this through time blocking. And if you've never blocked your time, this is gonna be an incredible exercise for you. If you already block your time, listen up because this is a, probably a new way of doing it that is more refined, more strategic, and facilitates execution. So first, you're gonna have one strategic block every week. One three hour uninterrupted block of time that you are going to put on your calendar. Literally block it off of your calendar. You cannot double book yourself. You're not available for meetings or phone calls or text messages or anything else in that period of time. That is your deep work block of time where you're gonna execute your core tactics. One of those a week. Remember I said you can accomplish your three year vision in just one three hour block of time every week. This is your strategic block. Next, you have your buffer blocks. This is where you will deal with the low value and unplanned activities, things that can tend to be distractions. Now this totally depends on your schedule and the specific goal that you're trying to achieve, but this might mean 30 minutes a day you block this out, this buffer time, this buffer time, or maybe two separate one hour blocks bookending your week, however you wanna do that. But for me to go back to the YouTube example, this is when I would review my analytics. So yes, it's an important action, but it's not as important as actually sitting down and pressing record. So this becomes a buffer block activity. And the third block of time that you're gonna schedule, and this is just as important, this is your breakout block. So this is a three hour block of time every week that is just for you, not to accomplish your goals, not to work, but for you to do something restful, something that will reinvigorate you so that you don't get burned out. This can be reading a book, going for a walk, having coffee with a friend, but make sure you're carving out a little window of time every week. And three hours is not the tiniest window, but it's an important amount of time. So the next piece, number five, is the scorecard. And before we dive into the scorecard, I just wanna mention the difference between leading and lagging indicators. We can only control leading indicators. Your lagging indicator is typically your goal. So for me, my lagging indicator is the number of YouTube subscribers. The leading indicator is how many videos I've uploaded. The action items that I can actually do and take to influence that lagging indicator. But it's an important distinction because you can't measure yourself by your lagging indicator because it tells you something historical. You have to only, you can only control the controllables and you can only control the actions that you can take in order to influence those lagging indicators. So just think critically about that in terms of your own goal. So scoring your week. It's important to score your week to hold yourself accountable. At the end of every week, you're gonna look at your list of tactics and say, for example, you have five tactics on there. Each one is worth 20%. So a perfect score would be a score of 100. If you only did four of those five things, your score is an 80. Okay, you know, an eight is not so bad. That's not a failing score. It's not amazing. It's not bad. Can you do better next week? Or you can just maybe expect 80% results if you're only putting in 80% of the effort. So the scorecard is meant to keep you honest and accountable to yourself. And embrace the score, because it shows you where you can improve. The score doesn't lie. I mean, the score is only, it's a mirror reflecting back to you the actions that you took. It really helps you to develop discipline for yourself. There are so many good quotes out of this book that I have written down. I'm gonna share another one with you. Most people have the capacity to double or triple their income just by applying what they already know. It's not what you know or who you know, it's what you implement that counts. So next I'm gonna share with you the four keys to success. But before we do that, if you are liking this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you are into this and you like goal setting content and plan a life content, how to make your dream life a reality because that's what I love to make videos about. Go ahead and share this video with your partner as well. You can hit that little arrow share button and send them the link to it. Because if you are gonna start making 12 week goals, it's great to have your partner on board and maybe they also wanna set their own 12 week goals and you can hold each other accountable. That is like some magic dust that will make your goals even better, is having an accountability partner. So the four keys to success. The first is having a strong desire. This is that emotionally compelling vision you have for yourself. Number two, your keystone actions. The core actions that are gonna produce the results that you're after. It's what we do that counts, right? So these are your core tactics. Number three, you have to count the cost because everything comes with a sacrifice, an opportunity cost. Any time you spend doing one thing is time that you can't spend doing something else. Number four, this is a really good one. This is something I need to remind myself of. You need to act on commitments and not on your feelings. 
If you're just not feeling it in one day, if the weather is freezing cold and rainy and it's December and it's crappy and you just want to curl up with a book because your kid's at preschool and you have a little bit of quiet time and it would be so lovely to relax, no. You have made a commitment to yourself to publish a video every week, so you need to get out your camera, set up everything, turn on your lights, and hit record. Our commitments shape our lives. What you commit to yourself and commit to others, those are the things that come to fruition in your life. So you have to take action on your commitments, the things that you choose to do with intention and not be swayed by how you're feeling in the moment. Okay, another good quote, because that this book is just chock full of them. Again, if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend reading it. There's so much more in this book. These little nuggets that you'll probably pick out that I maybe just totally missed because there's a lot in here. Greatness in the moment. Results are simply a confirmation of greatness. So the greatness happens when you make the choice to do what it takes to become great. Oh yes, and before I forget, I am kicking off a five day goal setting a five day goal setting series next week. Monday through Friday, I will be uploading a new goal setting video specifically tailored to help you set and achieve your goals for 2023. So if you're interested in making 2023 your best year yet, make sure you sign up for my goal setting series in the link below. Every day of those five days, you will get a PDF companion for the video and you will get an encouraging email from me and know that you are amongst a community of people who are setting intentional, beautiful goals to make 2023 their best year yet. At the end of the day, I want you to know that you have the power and the capacity to make your dream life a reality, but it does take action. It takes planning and it takes showing up for yourself. Okay, so let me know in the comments, what is the first 12 week year goal that you think you're gonna set for yourself? If you're not already subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit a little thumbs up button to let me know you like this video. Next Monday starts, out, starts off my five day goal setting series and I can't wait to see you back for that. Have a beautiful day.